Thus, the strength of the electric field within a capacitor remain constant. There shouldn't be an or. All right, so does the strength of the electric field inside a capacitor remain constant? Okay, does the strength of the electric field change within a capacitor or remain constant? All right, that's the question that we will answer shortly. All right, we talked about the uh, light heat as well as the sound with it lightning. So because the light quantum jumps, heat, random vibration and rotational motion of the molecules, the sound is the sudden expansion and the collapse of the air, obviously. All right, so does the shape of the tip of the lightning rod matter? Okay, we'll take a look at it. Does the metal on your body attract lightning? All right, so that's the last question is the one. Oh, what is it that I just want to do? We're getting this problem. <clears throat> Don't want to use numbers, so this is fine. All right, so this problem is related to the understanding of how well we can apply the formula and how correctly can you apply it. All right, I'm talking about the flux formula. Okay, because these are vectors that we're looking at. Okay, let's have a quick conceptual discussion regarding this. Okay, guys, the electric field in this case is going to be from left to right. All right, so here's your electric field going from left to right. This is the electric field. All right, so that's what you got. All right, so it's from left to right. Your area is in the same direction. Okay, so are you going to get a positive, positive flux or a negative flux in this case? All right, E times dA times cosine of zero. Okay, so what is the cosine of zero in this case? It's going to be one, right? So this is going to give you a positive flux that you're looking at. Notice that the area vector is in the opposite direction of the electric field. So the electric field is to the right, the area vector is to the left. So E times dA times the cosine of 180 is going to give you a negative flux, right? All right, so here it's entering into the region, so it's going to give you an inflow. Here it's electric field is leaving the region, so it's going to give you an outflow. Inflow is going to be negative, outflow is going to be positive. All right, notice that the area vector is going to be perpendicular to the surface, but that's always the case. So area vector is in the vertical direction, and the electric field is in the horizontal direction. So what's the angle in this case? It's going to be 90 degrees. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? It's going to be zero, so there's no flux in that direction, right? All right, so... Uh, this is more of a conceptual exercise so that you can see how the mathematics is being used. All right, so I didn't want to discuss it yesterday because I'm, I was thinking that's too early to discuss it. All right, lightning, the conductor. So we talked about conductors, and we already mentioned that the light charges will be positive or negative. They will be repelled to the surface. So the excess charge is going to remain on the surface, which means that the light on the inside is going to zero because there's no net charge on the inside. On the inside. So the metallic enclosures is one of the best ways we can protect stuff from electrical discharge provided that you can place them inside these metallic enclosures. So, that's another Over. so next question is, speaking of metals, are they good at, I mean, we know they're good conductors, but are they really good at attracting lightning? I mean, the damaging effects of one Does metal on your body attract lightning? Lightning rods are made of Lightning metal. strike can be hard enough, but a few rare individuals. And in terms of the lightning rod, right? oh, of the skin, so of the heat wearing. Process. But does metal on the body actually attract lightning? At a high voltage lab in Manchester, England, researchers are preparing to find out. We use an impulse generator which is charged to a voltage of approximately one and a half million volts, causing a simulated lightning bolt. The mannequins have been painted with an electrically conductive paint so that they simulate the resistance of the skin of a human under normal conditions. Various metal objects have been... All right, so she, he, she's the one who's wearing the metal jewelry. Same height, so height's not a factor. ...attached to the test dummy on the left to see if it will be struck by lightning more times than the one on the right. All right, so he takes the first second. He takes the second one. Third one. And finally. Alright, so finally she gets it. Oh. In this tank, the electrical flow. Oh. And now look at his reaction. Just like a real lightning strike, the electrical flashover has left telltale fractal patterns on the dummy's body. If Roy Sullivan did have any metal on his body, it should have had no effect. Lightning experts believe it was due to a combination of high exposure and bad luck. Roy Sullivan was outdoors in an area with quite so metal on your body to attract lightning. Quite a bit of lightning. It doesn't appear so, right? Okay, so the next question is, does the size of the metal matter? Maybe even more metal. Of course, if your tongue piercing is this... Because the argument is that the metal on your body is not going to attract lightning. Because it's too small. So the next question is, if that's the case, how about the size of the metal? Big lightning is the least of your worries. I'm going to go into the top of the head and go out to the bolt and back in. It just goes to show you, know, don't put any really big bolts in your mouth going at the pistol. <laughs> Finally, a test for the mother of all studs. Oh, cheap piercing there. It's unlikely to catch on at many nightclubs, though it might just help you get in the door. Will it attract lightning? Last, a direct hit. 
Well, that knocked the door knob right out of his face. So does, does the size of the metal size of the metal matter in terms of attracting lightning? Well, the process is kind of conclusive on that. So the conclusion is, of course, it does, right? So don't have a doorknob on your face. Is a statement to that end? Do you think that's an accurate conclusion? Yes or no? I'm gonna say no. Okay, Bailey, you wanna say no? Why? Because you don't like Nifasters? No, Nifasters is a good show. I'm kind of sad oh, it's an awesome show. I love yeah. Nifasters, but I, I love it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. I love the way they come up with these experiments, but a lot of the times their conclusions are a little bit off. In this case, once again, they are way off. There's a reason for it. It's not the size of the metal that matters. It is the shape of the metal. Okay, do you guys notice that when you have these sharp edges and pointy edges, the charge concentration goes up, charge density goes up. As a result, the strength of the electric field increases. So as a result, it becomes a lot more attractive to lightning. Notice the lightning rods, extremely long and pointy, right? Okay, why use metal? Why not use glass or porcelain or whatever? You end up using metal and there's a good reason for it because uh, obviously it's, it's gonna get polarized and charges are free to move much faster up and down. All right, so you can keep increasing the strength of the metal. A strength of the lacquer cube because as these step leaders start to come down and the polarization starts to get stronger and stronger and stronger, so it starts to become much more attractive to lightning. So it is the shape of the metal, it's extremely sharp and it's extremely pointy on purpose. All right, so it looks like this. This is amazing. All right, so that's the design that Franklin came up with, and King George the third decided to come up with a spherical ball as a lightning rod. All right, you know, Franklin, when he came up with his own design, he decided not to patent it, so anyone and everyone who wanted to use it could use it, right? And why then King George decided that he was going to come up with his own design? All right, guys, the pointy, sharp, is attractive to lightning. When you have a spherical ball, metallic ball, what happens? The charges are uniformly distributed, so the strength of the electric field is not going to be as much, so it's not as attractive to lightning. Got it? So why is that King George, instead of using Franklin's design, decided to come up with his own, which is not as good? Any ideas? He was jealous of Franklin and wanted to have an invention of his own? Who said that? That was Lucas. Okay, Lucas, uh, why would you be jealous of Franklin? This guy's the king. I mean, like, Ben Franklin was pretty smart, pretty successful. Um, you know, had a good life in him. You know, I'd be jealous of him, too. Well, he's one of my heroes, but the other guy's a king. <laughs> yeah, King George was also kind of crazy, so that, there's also that. Well, all kings are kind of crazy, so let's ignore that one. All right, Lucas, I'm going to give you five points. All right, King George. He was mad at us for winning the revolution. That's exactly right. Matthew, give yourself ten points. The reason why I've been just talking about Franklin nonstop on a $100 bill, because uh, this guy deserves to be on a $100 bill for everything that he had done. And, 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 of course, King George could never forgive Franklin for being such an asshole to him. All right, so the nice thing about King George's design, though, now we know how to protect us, protect us from lightning. Okay, for example, um, your car antenna, do you guys notice that there's a small ball on top? All right, so King George's design doesn't work, so why not use something that doesn't work? All right, so instead of, if you're going to have metal, you, you don't want to put anything pointy on it. They put a ball on it on purpose because you don't want to attract lightning to, to yourself. So Franklin is once again the winner in this argument. King George, not so much. So this is the face of a winner on, on a hundred dollar on a hundred dollar bill, and this is the face of a loser. And speaking of losers and winners, oh my God, this is beautiful. All right, guys, you're looking at a World War One German military helmet. Okay, so what was the purpose of it? All right, so it's a battle. You run out of bullets. So what do you do? You ram down the enemy, and then there's a lightning storm, and then you're losing a bunch of people, right? So it's not the metal helmet which is a problem. Germans are smart. World War Two, they go, okay, let's keep the helmet. You throw up the spike on top, all right? Because it's not the shape. It's the shape of the helmet, the metal that attracts lightning. It's not the size. All right. These are beautiful. All right, so In the middle of a children's soccer game, the skies open. Players take shelter under a. All right. I don't know if you guys remember Cree the and umbrellas, the, the certain umbrellas that they used to have. They used to have these pointy. Coach puts up a large umbrella. It's a 10, 15 years ago. Terrible mistake. And that it would literally, it would attract lightning to itself. The new ones, the top of the umbrella is a metal piece which is kind of small and it's, it doesn't have sharp edges usually, so they got rid of it. Now, a lot of people struck by lightning survive because of the simple reason that it's usually not a direct hit. These are cyclones. I don't want to say that these are easy to survive, but these are survival. And people feel the force of the lightning strike. But how could so many have been hit by a single bolt? Most victims are not hit by lightning directly, but by a charge that jumps from a nearby object, such as a tree. This side flash still has enough power to stop the heart and burn the skin. Okay, now the ground is going to become electrified. Whatever you do, don't lie down. And there's a good reason for it that you will find out tomorrow. Don't ever lie down on the ground. Victim. And keep your legs together. Victims can also be shocked from below. Immediately after a strike, the ground becomes electrified. The current travels through the person where they make contact with the ground. Keep your legs together. Usually. Because the current is going to go up one leg, come down the other. Be up one leg. And down the other. And then your balls are going to get roasted. If you're caught out of doors in a thunderstorm, the best thing to do is get indoors in a sizable building. So he says that the best thing to do is... Get inside a sizable building. Uh, I'll say get into a car if you can help it. 
You can't do that. You should get into a metal car. All right, so he says it's a sizable building first. If not, it's not okay. The car's metal body discharges the burn away from the driver and blew it. Never stand under the tallest tree. Try to stay off hills where you're the tallest object. But you're not totally safe indoors. If you're indoors, you shouldn't touch anything that's connected to the outside. All right, don't touch anything connected to the outside, such as what? Because the lightning could strike that outside and come in, and, and that includes the telephones. All right, so don't be on our phone with wires. Wires. Shouldn't be leaning against the refrigerator. Don't be getting anything from the fridge. There. Uh, shouldn't be near the house plumbing. Don't be pissing or shitting. Shouldn't be in the shower. Don't be in the shower. Just stay away from everything. Stay away from everything. Okay. Guys, versus a car. You can piss and shit in your car. You're still fine. All right, so car is always better. Amazingly, all 17 victims survived. All right, so best place to be inside a metallic enclosure under any circumstances. All right, I want to do a little bit of math. Okay, let me give you guys a break first because my iPad got disconnected. All right, take a break for 10. About 10. Okay, so regarding the video. This is for a charging slugging This is as far as you go. All right, so this was like two pages. All right, so by using Gauss's law, by using the Gauss's law, we'll get to do the same. Except this time it's going to be real, real, real easy. All right, let me just find this real fast. The Gauss's law. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, so this is an insulator. Boop, boop, boop. So this is a nine conducting sheet, so it's an insulator. Notice that it's charged, the surface becomes charged, and in this case it is charged positively, so the electric field is pointing in this direction, the area vector is pointing in the same direction. The electric field is pointing to the left, the area vector is pointing to the left, and the stuff that you guys are looking at, this thing is your Gaussian region, right? So you draw your Gaussian region just like this. All right, so that's what we will do. So we'll do a fast derivation. This derivation is going to be really fast. Gaussian law is just amazingly powerful. In terms of computing something like this is simple enough geometry. So that's what we will do. What we're going to do. Oh, sure. 